I want to thank God again for the opportunity uh, just that I've been given uh, by the father of this house to be able to uh, continue with this devotion and just speak into your lives as God's children. I want to thank God that yesterday we were able to talk about the portals that we hit oftentimes as leaders and how we can be able to navigate through them. Today we still want to focus on David because remember we began uh, in 2 Samuel chapter number 6 when David had just hit a portal as he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant. And I still want to look at David's life today because he also hit another major portal in his life. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30 verse number 1 through to 4 and today I just want us to talk about you know from tragedy to triumph. Whenever you hit a portal, how can you be able to get out of that tragedy and become triumphant? First Samuel, chapter number 30, verse number 1 to 4, the Bible says, Then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone and carried them off and went their way. Wow. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength to weep. Our Father and our God, we are grateful for these moments of learning. For the Lord, as we learn more on how to move from tragedy to triumph whenever we've hit major portals on our road to destiny. May you give me the nimbleness of mind and the clarity of thought as I speak into the lives of your children. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just, just to be able to uh, give us again a background of this story. This, this is a sermon by itself, but... But uh, for our purpose, it's going to be a little bit devotional and short. The story of David at Ziklag is as inspiring and as challenging to every one of us. Because, in fact, we, we will all definitely be able to learn life lessons from this particular story on how we can be able to navigate through life's portals on your road to your destiny. David got to Ziklag while he was being chased by Saul from the cave of Adullam up until he landed in Ziklag, the land of the Philistines that was. Then the king of the Philistines is called Achish. He actually loved David so much. And David also loved him. And he allowed him to live in that land of Ziklag. And the king gave David an asylum to stay protected from Saul on a parcel of land in the town of Ziklag. But as you look at the life of David, the life of David is full of portals, full of problems, full of challenges. Because, for example, you know, David had a problem whereby he was being pursued by King Saul. He, he, he barely accept, escaped several assassinations from Saul himself. Several attempts from Saul. He had to spend much time in hiding in the wilderness because of Saul. His entire family was kidnapped on this occasion at Ziklag. His friends, the people that he thought were going to be together with him, actually turned against him. And they are ready to stone him. They are ready to kill him. Yet they are the one who had actually allowed him to lead them. And he is the one who turned these people who are distraught and in despair, he turned them into mighty men of war. He suffered the shame of having committed adultery and also committed murder. His son Amnon raped his daughter Tamar. His other son Absalom murdered Amnon. Absalom again led a revolt against his father. And Absalom himself was killed, which was so much grief to David. So, so David is used to portals. He's used to problems after problems after problems. 
and, and, and I pray that if you are in this problems, if you've ever been in a myriad of situations like the ones we are seeing David has found himself into, it's of necessity to, you know, look at his story and try and find out how did he get himself out of it? What did he do to be able to get himself out of it? Because one thing that I've re discovered with regard to life issues is that David didn't even see the devastation of Ziklag coming. Whenever you're on your road to destiny, it's difficult to know that there's a portal in front of you. Especially the people that are living around these Eastlands. We are prone to portals. At times, it's carpeted. Then when it rains, the portals come in. And at times, you, you're so happy while you're driving your nice car. You've just put on some new Ling Long tires. And you're happy that you've got new tires. And all of a sudden, you're goo and, 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 and you're wondering what really happened. You've hit a portal. And the new tire has been torn. And you wonder now, how are you going to get in this, out of this place? Listen to me, child of God. It's possible on your road to destiny to have both a mistake and a miracle simultaneously. And if you think that's a joke, you better ask Abraham and Sarah, whereby they had both a miracle and a mistake at the, at, at the same time. On your road to destiny, whenever you hit a, post, a portal, it's possible to be thriving and winning big in one area of your life and also losing in the other side of your life. And these are the times whereby there are moments when you feel you are doing what needs to be done. You're in your highs, you're in your peak, you've reached the zenith of your life and all of a sudden you plunge yourself into a ditch and you end up having what we call a what happened moment. I didn't see it coming. It's what you don't see coming as a child of God that unsettles you. You end up losing your focus because you never saw it coming. And, and, and guess what? And, and I need to educate you on this. And, and I don't know whether you'll call it a revelation, but I just need to educate you on this because the devil's strategy is always to catch you when you are tired, not necessarily physically, when you are tired emotionally, when you're tired psychologically, when you feel exhausted and you cannot be able to take it no more. And the challenge with being tired is that being tired at times is not easily detectable. You can be at the end of your rope and still serving. You can be at the end of your rope and the people around you don't even know about it. Yet you, are, you have reached your breaking point in life. Because you didn't see it coming. We must be careful. Whenever people hit portals in their lives, we must be careful how we treat those people when they are at their breaking point. Don't judge them or scold them. Your responsibility is to be able to encourage them when they are in their portal. Listen to me, child of God. If you read First Samuel chapter number 30 and verse number 4, the Bible says, Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. And at times we've reached that place whereby you weep. I've ever reached that place in my life whereby things were topsy-turvy, you know, helter-skelter. It was just a myriad of issues, problems after problems, situations after situations. And you're wondering what's really happening. You're serving on one side. You're preaching powerfully on one side. People are getting saved on one side. But you're in shambles in the inside. You have a lot of pain in the inside of you. You're going through challenges. And, and, and people, you, you live a life whereby it, it's like you don't want nobody to know because you're in pain, because you're in a leadership role. And you want to continue leading them. Yet you are hemorrhaging on the inside of you. You see, the severity of the situation when David wept is that when you find yourself in distress, it's one thing. But when your own team cannot also help you because they have found themselves in the same predicament, then that's a tragedy. That's the severity of that particular situation because sometimes as human beings, you are allowed to vent, to let it out. You're allowed to mourn. 
You're allowed to cry because you're an emotional being. You're not a robot. And I know of the many times that I've cried, at times when I'm, when I'm driving and I'm playing songs in my car and I, I would think of situations and circumstances and I just cry. At, it's not, you're not even crying before the Lord or crying that God should do something. You don't know why you're crying. It's just tears are just coming out of your eyes because of the situations that you have been through. There are times when you're totally down and out. You don't know how to process the situations that you are in. You, you don't even feel like the Bible is making any sense to you when you're reading it. You read it and you're sleeping at the same time. You try to pray and you have no strength to even pray. But if you read that scripture, the Bible says, then David and the people who are with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. Until is a time word. That word until. Because until simply means you have reached a place whereby you cannot give no more tears to the situations that you are in. You cannot be able to give any more energy to text back because there was a bad text that came to you. You don't have again the sagacity to be able to make a call because you've got no more tears. You've reached your until moment. You can't be able to talk about it again. You're tired of going through that situation. You're tired of including people in that particular situation because you have reached your until moment. David cried until he had no more strength to, 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 to weep. His, the people that were together with him wept until they had no more strength to weep. And there are times for you to be able to rise from tragedy to triumph. You've got to reach your until moment. Whereby you tell the devil enough is enough. You tell the pain enough is enough. You tell the sickness enough is enough. And you begin to soldier on as a child of God. But when David reached his until moment, what did he do? The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Because there comes a moment in your life when you say to yourself, if no help is coming, if the people around you are acting wild and there's a lot of mischief in them, if I cannot be able to control my situation, then I must make a decision to encourage myself. There comes a moment as a child of God when nobody is there to pray for you. You pray for yourself. There comes a moment when there's nobody there to praise God together with you. You praise God by yourself. There comes a moment where no one is talking to you or exalting you and or encouraging you. When that moment comes, you begin to talk to yourself. Talk yourself out of the situation. All at times you find yourself alone. Your pastor cannot encourage you. Your wife cannot encourage you. Your children cannot encourage you. Your job cannot encourage you. You can't depend on the music that you've always been hearing and listening to to tantalize your emotions. You can't continue to do that. You must be done with crying. You must wipe your tears. Wipe your tears. Take, you wipe your tears as a child of God because of the things that have come against you. As much as the people are planning to kill you, they're planning to stone you, and yet you've been their leader. They've forgotten the places that you got them from, but now that you've hit a portal in your life, the very same people who are singing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest are the same, same people who are now saying, crucify him. He's now good for nothing. You reach a moment whereby you've got no one to turn to. All you need to do is encourage yourself in the Lord through the situation. That's the time you praise him like never before. You praise him like you're crazy. You tell God to ordain his praise in your mouth. You bless the Lord at all times and let his praise perpetually be in your mouth. David encouraged himself, but how did he encourage himself? Listen to me. David's response to this test would either confirm his destiny as a king 
or destroy him completely. And there would be no warning of what is about to happen. And there would be no second chances. His response to the situation that he had found himself would, would either define him being a king or still a kid thinking he's a king. It's a defining moment. One of the things that David did is that David rehearsed his past victories to be able to encourage himself. You, you, you might not be where you wanted to be today, but you are not where you started. Remember and try and look back the first time the oil touched your head, David. Remember that particular time and the promise that was given to you at that particular time. Begin to count your blessings one by one and see what the Lord did for you. And I believe David was trying to look at the very moments whereby he defeated Goliath. He was, he was trying to look at the moment whereby he killed a bear and he killed a lion. He caught it by its symbol of authority and, and, and he killed it. He began to remember the very many victories that he had in every place that he went. He had victory. God gave him victory. God protected him, you know, you know from, from the assassination attempts of Saul and the many people that tried to kill him. He remembered those particular moments and he encouraged himself and he knew that the same God that delivered me from the paws of the lion and the paws of the bear is the same God that is able to deliver me even from this pandemic and from this situation. His wife is gone. His children, the children are gone. The, the, the city has already really been devastated. It's been burned down. The people that are together with him wants to stone him. When you reach that particular place, when your back is against the wall, the best thing you can be able to do is to encourage yourself in the Lord by what doing what? By rehearsing your past victories. The number two thing that David did when he encouraged himself in the Lord is that he reminded himself of who God is to his situation. In your situation, who is God to you? In my situation, my God is well able. And I think you can be able to be jotting down there uh, on your Facebook page right now who you think God is to you whenever you find yourself in a portal. Because in my situation, he is the God of all flesh. In my situation, nothing is impossible with him. In my situation, he is a way maker. Even when I don't see him working, he is working. Even when I don't feel it, he is still working. Listen to me, child of God. He is working in every situation. He is my buckler. He is my shepherd. He is my doorkeeper. He is my door opener. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my ever-present help in time of need. He is my yoke breaker. He is my righteousness. He is Jehovah El Gibor. He is Jehovah Tzedukenu. He is Jehovah Shalom. Who is he to you in your breaking point? Who is he to you in your dark moments? Who is he to you in your night seasons? That's what you need to ask yourself. And encourage yourself the moment you know who God is. Please, as you're on your road to triumph, when you're coming from tragedy and you're about to get into your destination, please don't do what some of the men of, that were with David did. In the brook Besor, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse number 9 to 10, David and the 600 men with him came to the Besor Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. You know, names, names, names are very important. They identify particular places, specific persons. They locate and identify situations. And, and, and I looked at that word, Besor. Besor means a cold place. It's a ravine or a brook in the extreme southwest of Judah. It, it, it's a cold place. And these men, because they were devastated, and they could not be able to get out of the portal they had found themselves in. They allowed the brook, they allowed the situation to bring them down. They gave up at the brook Besor. And it reminds me of Tira, Abraham's father, 
whereby the Bible says that the moment he reached Haran, he died, yet he had lost a son called Haran. The scholar says that Tira named that place Haran after his son's death, which means he, he was not able to overcome the death of his son, so the situation that he found himself in killed him instead of moving forward to Canaan where he was supposed to go. It reminds me of Naomi when I talked to you the other time. Naomi means pleasant. It means delightful. But because he had hit a portal in her life, she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because I'm bitter. I walked out of this place when I was full, but God has dealt wondrously with me and I've come back when I'm empty. They've reached their besor moment. And some people get beaten in the battle, but there are others who get better in the battle. Don't die in Besor. As we conclude, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 18 says, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. So not only did David recover all that had been stolen, but he took the spoil of the Amalekites, and there was such abundance that he began to send gifts to the elders of the land to give a testimony of all that God had done by restoring and recovering the things that he had lost. But if he would have died at the brook Besor, together with the other people, he would have no testimony that our God is a way maker and our God is a deliverer. Don't die in the brook Besor. Don't ever die in your painful place. Ziklag is not your final resting place. It is only the testing place of your life. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Pursue, recover, and move forward as a child of God. Listen to me. I'm glad that David encouraged himself. I'm glad that David never died in Besor. Why? Because two days later, the crown came to Ziklag. In 2 Samuel chapter number 1, now I understand why, why David was tested in Ziklag, why David lost everything. Now I understand why the soldiers that were together with the, in, the, in the Philistine armies together with him said David cannot go and fight together with us. Now I understand why God did not want David to join the battle in fighting the Israelite people. David didn't see it coming. But the crown, to validate his anointing, found him. In 1 Samuel chapter number 16, we begin to see of kingship that came after his testing. Everything God promised you will meet you at the place of your pain. He lost everything in Ziklag. But when he recovered all, he was anointed in 1 Samuel chapter number 16. But he never became king in 1 Samuel chapter number 16. He still went through pain. He went through turmoil. He went through tribulations and tests. He hit major portals in his life. But while in Ziklag where he was crying, crying because of the loss of his children and property and the spoils that he had had in his previous raids, while still in that place of pain, when Saul died, someone came from the battlefield and brought the crown that was meant for David in Ziklag the place of his pain. Don't die in Ziklag. You can be able to move from tragedy to triumph. You're the blessed of the Lord. I believe that the Lord has blessed you this entire week and that you've been able to learn quite a number of things so that you are able to get out of your portal. Don't die in your portal. Don't be imprisoned in your portal. Have moments of learning when you hit your portal and please realize that God builds your character and tests your faith whenever you hit a portal. I believe that the Lord has blessed you this entire week and my prayer is that given an opportunity we'll be able to talk about more or now we can be able to navigate through these challenges that come with life issues. Allow me to pray for you. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you and honor you for the opportunity that Lord you have given me to be able to speak into the lives of my viewers and my listeners. I pray for them today that Lord do not allow them to die in the brook Besor, 
Don't allow them to die in that cold place. Don't allow them to die in that painful place. Don't allow them to die, King of glory God, in the place whereby they are supposed to have moved forward. I pray that may you give them the fortitude to be able to move forward. Strengthen their feeble knees, O oh God. Enable them to square their shoulders so that they can be able to move forward as your children. I bless you and I honor you for what you're doing in their lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just in case you're not born again and would like to give your life to Jesus, would you please repeat this prayer after me briefly? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I am a sinner. But today, willingly, I open up my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me your son. I have confessed with my mouth and I believed in my heart and I am born again. Amen. If you made that prayer, the number's on our screen. Please text us. Please communicate with us. Others, thank you very much for being together with me this entire week as we discussed the portals on your road to destiny. See you at the top. God bless you.